So this is the Illigur Ionic and I came across this laptop because I got a bit tired of constantly looking at gaming laptops and I felt that it was equally as interesting to look at more creator focused laptops especially if they're packing not just an Intel 10th gen i7 Comet Lake processor but also a dedicated Nvidia GPU. And topping it off is a price point that is very competitive given the specs. I'm also very curious to test this laptop out as in the past I've used the ASUS ZenBook and while it was good enough of course, it cost me way more than this laptop did right here so alongside seeing how well it would have suited me when I was constantly travelling, writing and I needed you know, something light, I do want to see how well it would have handled my workload of game development in both Unity and Unreal Engine and you know, video editing in DaVinci Resolve, especially compared to an Intel 9th gen part. Because honestly, just based on the spec sheet alone, this <laughs> might just be one of the best Ultrabooks. Would you call this an Ultrabook? <laughs> yeah, or still in light, you know, one of the best out there. So let's find out if it really is with a deep dive into the Illigur Ionic. So unlike Illigir's past offerings, the Ionic isn't targeted at gamers as much as it is towards creators. What this means is the laptop is more suited for people who are looking for a device that has a big enough screen at, you know, 15 inches with a very good processing power while still being thin and light and most importantly, have really good battery life. This makes the Ionic perfect for people who are not only, uh, you know, not necessarily into gaming, but rather into core heavy workloads like video editing, photo editing, 3D workflows, and of course, if you're like me, game development, and I'm definitely interested to see how well the Ionic handles my daily workflow as a game developer. Now, since I talked a little bit about processing power, I think now might be a really good time to talk about the processor inside of it. So for those of you who are unaware, there are actually two kinds of 10th gen Intel processors, Comet Lake and Ice Lake, and well, I guess recently as well, there's now a Comet Lake H. So anyway, Ice Lake is based on the new 10 nanometer process node and is more tuned towards higher graphics performance with its new 11th gen um, integrated GPU and better battery savings. Comet Lake on the other hand, and also Comet Lake H is 14 nanometer, yes, I know, but it does come with more improved performance over Whiskey Lake, albeit with the same rather anemic last gen HD graphics. So let's open up the Ionic and see what it is packing under the hood. Now, the Ionic that I have here packs an Intel Core i7-10510U, which is a 14 nanometer Comet Lake U part, has 4 cores and 8 threads, and can boost all the way up to 4.9 GHz. To make up for that paltry built-in GPU, Illigir has paired it with an NVIDIA MX250, which is a nice addition for productivity, but uh, if you're looking to do any gaming with it, then I don't think that this is your GPU. It also comes with 16GB of DDR4-2666 RAM and bear in mind that it only comes with one RAM stick slot so if down the line you're looking to do any uh, upgrading, you're going to want to get a large single stick of RAM. Of course, being single stick also means that it also runs at single channel. In terms of storage, it normally does come with a 512GB stick of NVMe storage but the unit that I have is special in that it comes with a high performance Seagate Barracuda 510 SSD though it is a bit smaller at 256GB. Just like all the Illigir laptops that I've looked at before, Wi-Fi is served by an Intel 9560 with an option to upgrade to a Wi-Fi 6 card and the battery that comes in this laptop is almost large enough to be banned on flights at 90 to 1 hour. What's unusual however is that Illigir has gone with a single cooling fan with an empty space where, you know, another would be. Now I have talked to them about this and they said that this is for their future models of this laptop that carry a beefier and dedicated GPU. At any rate though, one should be totally fine for the 10510U and the MX250. The display that comes with the laptop is in Illigir fashion, color calibrated to 100% sRGB and is the BOE08AB which looks really good. No high refresh rates here but that's not really a massive issue. 
at 3,700 ringgit or the current equivalent of 850 US dollars, the Illigir Ionic comes in at a very compelling price package when you look at it specs wise, but it does have some stiff competition that I'll talk about at the end of the video. For now though, let's move on to the body of the Ionic. I really like the embossed logo on the lid that stands out with its chrome finishing and the clean, minimalistic body that is made of magnesium alloy that Illigir says makes it sturdier and gives it better heat dissipation properties. Now, I can at least attest to the former as I was challenged by Sean of Illigir to try and bend and warp the sheet of magnesium alloy in their showroom and trust me guys, it was really difficult and a testament to the toughness of the material. So this is a big deal for me because I used to use a Asus Zenbook that was made of aluminum and it would almost always get some form of warp from being in my bag, making it unsteady and rocky when placed on a flat table and kind of needed me to bend and warp it back. It is also lighter than aluminum and does not attract fingerprints like a normal plastic body would. The one-handed lid opening test is close to being good. And all of this really sounds amazing except for one big problem in which my brother-in-law pointed out the moment that he picked up the laptop to which I quote in his own words and German accent. Ja, what is this? It feels really cheap, no? Just looks and feels like a really cheap laptop. And honestly, I have to agree with him because the first time that I picked it up and held it, it really gave off that same feeling of being really cheap. I even asked them if it was made out of plastic because it really did not feel like metal. So to me, a large part of this has probably got to do with the spray and finishing of the laptop, which while it is of course made of metal, it kind of looks and feels like it's painted on plastic which is a shame really because it is actually quite a sturdy laptop. It also maybe has something to do with the silver finishing that is used on the laptop that looks really cheap so maybe if they went for something like a more space grey colour scheme like that of the uh, MacBook it would be better but at this point I'm just guessing. This perception is further not really helped by my impressions as soon as I opened the lid. Now, this might of course just be a localized issue with the unit that they loaned me, but the black bezel around the display actually pops off a little bit on the left and right corners with the left being more pronounced and the keyboard. Guys, to date I have tried quite a number of Illigir laptops, whether it's at the showroom or you know given a month with it and in general i've actually quite liked their laptop keyboards but this one by far has the worst keyboard so where do i start let's start with the typing experience pressing down the keys feels a little bit mushy needs a bit of force and is a bit inconsistent from key to key, but here's the real problem. When typing up this review on the laptop, I found myself missing a few letters here and there, even though I know for a fact that I'm actually pressing down the keys because I can feel the tactile feeling of pressing it down. So I start messing with the keys a little, and some of the keys have really bad actuation in which either you press a key and nothing happens as you can see right here, or the key somewhat refuses to go down, and trying to force it down even further creates a very bad creaking noise that is just really unpleasant guys. The thing is, it's not just a single key that exhibits this strangeness too because it seems to be a number of them. Like the spacebar right here that has a dead spot on the top right corner and just creaks when you press onto it and so it really, really makes for a very unpleasant typing experience. Being a creator-focused laptop and as such more geared towards someone who might spend more time typing on the whole keyboard than just using the standard gamer keys of WASD, I find this to be a bit of an oversight because if anything, it should have the best keyboard. 
Then there is the backlighting. It has three different backlightings of off, low and high and not only are low and high pretty much indistinguishable the backlighting of the keys ooh, look absolutely terrible and are way too weak to be visible in normal light i also don't understand why their laptops so far that have been focused on gamers have a full-sized keyboard with a numpad but one that is focused on creators is lacking one then you have the power button that is above the keyboard which is, you know, totally fine. But the charging light of the laptop is actually beside the power button and so if you're charging your laptop and you have the lid closed, there is no way to tell if your laptop is charging unless you open the lid of the laptop and take a look. I think I've said this multiple times for many laptops before but I believe that this kind of indicator light should be at the side of the laptop right beside the port rather than in a place that is so easily hidden with a closed screen. Now again, the Ionic is targeted at creators but on the left of the laptop we see a micro SD card slot and honestly, aside from GoPros, I don't really know what else you would use this for as it leaves video content creators like myself in the dark as most cameras and DSLRs use full-sized SD cards and so we would need to carry a dongle around. I would have also liked to see a headphone jack that is separate from the microphone jack but you know what, hey, at least it's there but aside from those things, I do think that the laptop is relatively well feature packed. This is because you not only find two USB ports here, one USB 3 and another USB 2, but also an Ethernet port which is really rare for a laptop of this thickness together with a Kensington lock. Over on the right there is another USB Type-C port which is running at USB 3 speeds and another USB 3 port and a full sized HDMI port. Yes, no mini or micro ports, a full sized HDMI port. You will also find the power port here of course and on that note the power brick is actually pretty light and is made by FSP, outputs 19 volts at 3.42 amps and weighs in at just 380 grams. Finally onto the physicality of the laptop, it is fairly light at 1.48 kilograms and has a relatively small dimension for a 15 inch machine but I found that the specs listed on Illigear's website is different from the real world measurements where I suspect that they may have taken the shorter side of the laptop to measure instead which um, let's just say I don't agree with. So based on my measurements then the laptop is of 357mm in the width, 237mm in depth and finally not 15mm but rather 20mm thick if you're including the feet, meaning 20mm um, off the desk. Onto the usage of the laptop, while I do like that the screen is large and color accurate, I do find that just like every other Illigear laptop that I've tested, it doesn't go dim enough in a dark room which is not really a deal breaker but just a minor annoyance. Aside from that though, guys, honestly said, this has really got to be the most satisfying experience I've had using a thin and light notebook. I say this because this guy has amazing battery life and it is, you know, amazing. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's because of the uh, 10th gen Intel part, the larger than normal battery or the lack of a higher performance uh, GPU or maybe the combination of all three but this is easily the longest lasting laptop that I have ever used. I've tried watching movie marathons on Netflix, writing this review on it, surfing and blasting music on it, and even after all that normal activity trying to kill the battery, I still ended up with, get this guys, 15 hours and 30 minutes of usage which is honestly amazing. I also find that the speakers on this laptop actually sound better than any of the other Illigear laptops that I've tested before and it really made for a much more enjoyable content consumption experience. Of course, once you start to hit up the more performance intensive tasks, the battery life will take a hit but even then it is a relatively mild hit and the performance when you're doing things like game development, video editing and photo editing is really good. 
Moving on to a bit of benchmark numbers, in Cinebench R20, it scored a multi-core high of 1,261, and after a 15-minute loop, it managed to maintain that score consistently with a maximum temperature of 86 and a all-core turbo of about uh, 2.8 GHz. This of course means that it never thermal throttled even once, um, even with an ambient temperature of 29 degrees Celsius and managed to deliver consistent performance, proving that the one fan setup that Illigar has gone for is more than enough to keep the chip in check. The single core benchmark isn't too bad either at 354 which is pretty close to the 393 of the 9750H and what you have to remember here guys is that while the 9750H is a higher wattage high performance chip, the 10510U in the Illigar Ionic is a ultra low voltage part that would normally perform a lot lower. Seeing the numbers here, I feel that they're pretty good for an ultra thin ultra portable laptop but if you need more performance, well then obviously you're better off with a H-series part. So it goes without saying of course that you shouldn't expect gaming to be amazing on this laptop but even with that said, I find that it's still not too bad because of that Nvidia MX250 GPU and it can even run Neon Noir on very high as you can see here which is a CryEngine ray tracing benchmark and it runs it perfectly fine at about 30fps albeit you know at 720p. During the entire benchmark, the GPU never exceeded 75 degrees Celsius and scored a result of 2,531. I think what impresses me about this laptop is that it manages to do all of this while being still relatively silent at load and I find that just awesome. So what's my conclusion of the Illigir Ionic? Well, if you've ever heard that saying that beauty is only skin deep, then I think that it applies to this laptop except that it's the other way around. I really love how insanely long the battery life is on this laptop, the performance that you get in a slim and light package that remains quite silent, the speakers that sound better and even then you still get a large color accurate display that is great for productivity. What I don't like is how all of this just feels let down by the body of the laptop and yes, I am body shaming a laptop but I feel that the build quality could be better especially the keyboard since this is targeted at creators who will be using the keyboard more than normal users and I feel that I would have loved to see a full sized SD card slot. Now I mentioned before that competition for this laptop is definitely out there and I mean it because you can actually get laptops from like Dell, HP, Acer with similar specs here in Malaysia for very similar price points. With that said though, although it's not perfect, I will definitely have to say that I will miss this laptop uh, when I have to return it because of that amazing battery life guys. And so. You know what, if Illigar goes ahead and addresses the build quality issues that I highlighted here in this video with their next creator focused laptop, then I may actually end up running away with it when they send it to me for review. <laughs> Jokes aside though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can do the usual YouTube thing of giving it a like, sharing it around, dropping your comments down below on what you think about this laptop. Make sure that you're subscribed and notified for when my next videos go out. And yeah, my name is Yang, the tech rodent. And well, yeah, you know what? It's honestly getting a bit hairy out there these days. Stay indoors and stay safe, guys. I'll see you in the next video.